In today's video demonstration, we're going to show how you can come up with an empirical model if you have data that you've collected from a plant or from anywhere over a long period of time. How do you take that data and use it to, f to create an empirical model? So basically, if you think about the way a spreadsheet is formatted, you'd have columns with certain numbers. So you might have flow rate and temperature and pressure. And let's say you wanted to correlate all those variables to predict some other variable. Um, like conversion in a reactor or something. So your data would typically be organized like this, where you'd have um, your column headings showing each of the types of data that you're collecting. And let's say I'm going to call have a new variable called y. So x1, x2, and x3 would be some other some data that you collect from the plant, and you want to use that data to predict some other variable like y. So your spreadsheet would look something like this. You'd have a whole column of x1s and a whole column of x2s that correspond in time with your x1s and you'd also have y's just some other variable but you're trying to model y as a function of x1 x2 and x3 so think of y as our output and x1 x2 and x3 as our input but depending on what you're trying to model and how you're trying to set this up um, it's important to distinguish which variable is your output y and which are your inputs so if we wanted to take this data and do a curve fitting, predicting y as a function of x1, x2, and x3, we would come up with a model. So I'm going to represent the model as y hat. And our model might look something like this. y hat is equal to some constant. So this beta naught is just a constant value. This will be the intercept of our model plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 plus beta 3 times x3 and you could go on and on you could use as many variables as you needed to predict the output y so with each new variable that you add you're also adding a new parameter that you'll need to fit and generally speaking the more variables and parameters you add the better model fit you can get but you might run into some issues if there's no correlation between one of your input variables and your output variable. You might get singularities when you're trying to fit, or you might um, run into something called overfitting, but we won't get into that level of detail today. So this is a scalar equation. So our y hat is going to produce, given some inputs, x1, x2, and x3, our y hat is going to produce a scalar value. But we can also formulate this in matrix form, where y hat is equal to x times beta, where x and beta in this case are now vectors. So I'm going to define big X as being a row vector that looks like this, 1 in the first place, um, then x1 x2 and x3 and the reason I include the 1 here is we need something for this beta naught to multiply against when we put this in matrix form so by adding in a 1 in the, fir in the um, first slot of this, call of this row vector we're giving our model the ability to have a non-zero y-intercept and my beta is going to be arranged as a column vector that looks like this beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. So when I expand this model out, I end up getting um, this 1 by 4 vector, 1 times x1 times x2 times x3, multiplied by this 4 by 1 column vector, beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. And if I went through and did the matrix math here, I've got a 1 by 4 multiplied by a 4 by 1, which results in a 1 by 1, which is also known as a scalar. And that ends up equaling beta naught times beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 times x2 plus beta 3 times x3. So just exactly this equation that we d wanted to have for our model. So the reason we're putting it in this vector multiplication form is because it makes the math a little bit easier. 
And when we move to a program like MATLAB, so Excel can do curve fitting, something like Excel, a spreadsheet program can do pretty simple curve fitting when you only have one input and one output. But we're going to derive a general case where you can have multiple inputs with to predict that output. So we'll do this in MATLAB, which is very good at um, doing matrix multiplications like this. So we, the way to do this, we're actually going to define capital X as being basically our spreadsheet of input data. So we're going to have our X1 here and our X2 here and our X3 here. So in this case, each of our X's is going to be a column vector with our input data. And if we were to put all those column vectors side by side to form a much larger matrix, then we're going to define that as big X. And if we want to have a non-zero intercept, we need to put a column of ones in here. So those are our ones. So that, that will give us something to fit uh, beta naught to. So this is basically just a data organization thing where a big X is just it's just a spreadsheet basically of data, but only the inputs that we're trying to get in our model. So Y is going to be a column vector that has this other variable. So it's going to have all the different Y values that we sample and collect from our plant or from whatever system we're trying to model. So another, so when we're trying to fit this model, we want to have the most accurate model, obviously. So we want to choose the betas that give us the best fit. And a pretty good metric of how well a model fits is the sum of the squared error. So we can define that as being the sum from i equals 1 to n, where n is the total number of data points. So let's say we're looking at a spreadsheet that has 4,000 data points. n is equal to 4,000. And we want that to be y minus y hat. And we want to take the squared value of that. So that's also equal to, if we put this in matrix form now, y minus x times beta. And if we take the transpose of that, remember this is the big X with all of our spreadsheet values, and this y is going to be this long column vector. So here's our x, and here's our y. And if we multiply that by y minus x times beta, if you, if you took a big matrix like this and multiply it by a column vector like this, and if you actually went out and spelled out the math, you would find that this ends up equaling the sum of squared errors. So we, we just put our equation into this form with these vectors and a matrix with our x data for so that we get a much nicer solution that we can implement in a program like MATLAB pretty easily. So I mentioned that we want to find the betas that result in a minimum value on the sum squared error. So we want to find a way to minimize this equation. So we want to minimize by changing our betas, we want to minimize this function y minus x times beta transpose and then y minus x times beta no transpose here. So when you're trying to minimize a function, you should know this from your calculus classes. Um, let's say you have a quadratic function like this and you have y and you have x here. If you want to find mathematically that minimum point, you would say the find the point where dy dx is equal to 0. So where the slope of y with respect to x is equal to 0. And that math would give you this minimum point. Well, we're doing the, basically the same thing here, except beta is multidimensional. So we have not just a simple one-to-one -one relationship like this graph shows. We have um, beta could go in several different directions. But because it's a quadratic term, each of those directions, there's going to be a minimum point, And any deviation from that minimum point in beta is going to result in a higher sum of squared errors. So what we want to do is we want to find the place where the derivative of our sum squared errors with respect to beta is equal to 0. So we're going to take this term, differentiate it with respect to beta, and then solve for the values of beta that result in the derivative of the sum squared error with respect to beta being equal to 0. 
So first, if we took this term and expanded it out, so our sum squared error was equal to y minus x times beta transpose times y minus x times beta. And if we just did some matrix algebra to expand this term out, we would get y transpose times y minus y transpose times x times beta minus beta transpose times x transpose times y plus beta transpose times x transpose times x times beta. So it might take a little bit of review for the rules of um, expansion of a term like this in matrix form. So if you don't understand this, I'd encourage you to go review just the rules of matrix algebra. But this is basically our term here. And we want to differentiate this term with respect to beta. So if I take the derivative of the sum squared error with respect to beta, I get this derivative is just 0. There's no beta in there, so this is just a constant. And when I, I can actually combine Actually, let me go back a step. These two terms, if you went through and multiplied these by hand, you would actually find that they end up being equal to each other. So we're going to replace this term with just a minus 2 times y transpose times x times beta. OK, so now let's go through and do that differentiation. The derivative of the sum squared error with respect to beta is equal to this derivative is 0. The transpose in here makes this uh, differentiation a little bit tricky. But if you went back and reviewed the rules of matrix calculus, you would find that this derivative is equal to minus 2 times x transpose times y. And then this derivative is. 2 times x transpose times x times beta. So now if we did some algebraic manipulation, we can actually just divide out the 2's that are the coefficients. And we end up with the term that looks like this. x transpose times x times beta is equal to x transpose times y. So I've moved this term over to here. And I've moved this term over to here, and we've divided through by 2. So now, solving this for beta, we take the inverse of x transpose times x, and we multiply that by both sides, and we end up getting beta is equal to x transpose times x, the inverse of that term, times x transpose times y. So we've gone through quite a bit of manipulation using matrix algebra and matrix calculus, but we end up with this really a fairly simple solution to solving this uh, least squares um, curve fitting problem. So now all we need to do is in a program like MATLAB or, or Python or some other program that deals well with uh, matrix calculations, we can take our data. Remember x was equal to basically a big, a big spreadsheet of data where we had x1, x2, and x3, and we also had a vector of 1s. If we can organize our data like this, and y was equal to a big column vector with all of the variables that we're trying to predict, if we organize our data like this, where we set up this big matrix x and this column vector y, all we really need to do is um, pick the form of our model by, and that'll just depend on how we arrange the data here. Um, we can then just plug it into this equation, and then we have the betas that minimize the sum squared error. So look at the next video on application of multiple least squares to see how you could take something like this and program it into MATLAB to get a, a good model fit like this.